Right. So, um, let's just go through here. Oops. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the way we usually do every this is um, um, I'll, I'll we'll we'll do inter introductions in a second. Um, but uh, the way we usually go around and do this is. Well, the way we're supposed to is we go through everybody um, and everybody says what they would like to talk about during the meeting. And then some people um, inevitably sometimes will have some things that are really long topics um, and maybe only applicable to one person. Um, and in that case, um, we'll put those last um, in case anybody needs to drop from the call because this is sort of just a drop in, drop out situation. Um, you know, if you have time some week and you want to jump on the call great um we'll be here um and if you don't then that's fine you can drop in to, to say something you can drop out but you know uh, basically you're, you're you're guaranteed that someone will be around from from uh whatever nine to ten uh pacific time is um so yeah so let's see so you wanted to talk about and and um sioko right yes i'm here all right, Sioko. Okay, I just want to make sure I remembered your name correctly. Okay, so uh, and you, so you've been going through the the installation step, and you hit the Google Google Club um, situation, which is unfortunate. Um, what all did you want to talk about today? Mm. Not sure. Um, sir, come to read Pozaka. Now yesterday, so I thought encounter Z problem. So, mm -hmm. all right, and then and you threw up a PR here, um, yes, to uh, to to help us uh, raise an error, which is good. Um, so we'll just put down. So like in this case, we 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 probably say you know okay. So um, review, oh, we got Sudhanshu, great. Um, review PR um, for. Uh, which throws an error um, if Python version is less than 3.7. Um, and then we do this, and then when we're done reviewing, we'll check off. Um, so let's see. And so, um, um, Sh Shoko, um, uh, or wait, no, um, well, sorry, remind me again. What, what was your name? Are you messaging me? Uh, yeah. Um, well, how, how do you how, how do you pronounce your name again? C O K O. C O K O. Okay. Cool. Sorry. I just want to make sure I'm getting it right here. I might ask you a few more times. Sorry. Um, C O C O K O. Um, so what what is your uh, what's your? We'll do a little round of introductions. But what's your uh, background? So I'm um, still a um, college student. I'm from Asia. My, I'm going to start in machine learning in last year. So, yeah, I'm going around with open source project and contribute to it. Cool. Cool. Yes. Very cool. So, um, so do you have uh, like do do you have much experience with machine learning at, at this point or or I'm still a so beginner, uh, never. Yeah. Cool. I'm doing some uh, handwriting recognition. Oh. Okay. Cool. Well, that's that's great. Yeah. So, um, and that's and that's kind of you know that's 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 our 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 target area is sort of you know um, you know people who who are maybe new to machine learning um so your you know your your insights and your 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 feedback are, are much appreciated um you know so if you if you notice things if you, you just you know you can just sort of create issues or maybe just put them in gitter whenever you run into anything like like you did where you know oops like this is not this is was not clear right uh, we want to make sure everything is very clear um, and this is a good, your first PR is a good step towards making sure that, that, that our, our installation instructions are clear. So, 
All right. Um, so, and then I'll, I'll just do a brief introduction here. So I'm I'm John. Um, I'm at Intel, and I do uh, um, I'm a, I mostly do security stuff. Um, and then um, uh, you know I, I'm the maintainer of, of this project, which is uh, machine learning and with some security involved as well. Um, and uh, and uh, yep. Um, so uh, Gash, do you want to go next? Yeah, so I I don't have much things to talk about. I I just wanted to ask like what triggers should we use for the Windows test and uh, when you say triggers, uh, what do you mean? Like, do you want to run them on every commit? Like, wouldn't that? I have, oh I yeah, let's run them on every that. commit. Um, yeah, let's let's run them on every commit. Um, so okay, so won't that fail master every time? Uh, well, okay, but we should skip out the test. Remember, we were going to do the unit test skip on any tests that are failing right now. Okay, I, I was like, first we will build on whatever error it's throwing on, and then we'll just test it in the CI, and then fix it, and then run it on master. I was under that impression, actually. Yeah, I mean, okay, yeah. So what I was, let me, and actually, let me, let me just, uh, we'll write this down and then we'll discuss. Um, because so. like recently on 29th October only like uh, GitHub released that workflow dispatch trigger. So it's dispatch basically you trigger. have a button and you just press it towards a branch and it runs the test on that branch. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Um, Uh, let me just note this down. So we had the dispatch trigger button released recently by GitHub. Um, it, it runs tests whenever you hit a button uh, rather than on every PR or push to a branch. Um, all right. Um, and Let's see. Uh, okay, so yeah, let's and then we'll talk about um, to run Windows tests. Okay. Um, I was just like worried about like if what if master is failing and we we are still like way behind on Windows stuff. So yeah. We'll so it. I mean, I think that's why. I mean, it would be good. So this is this is this is my reasoning behind the skipping is that if we go through and we identify which which tests are failing right now and then we skip them if we're on Windows, um, then we would know if other tests start failing. Um, and and we you know we're working we would work to fix the ones that are being skipped, right? Um, and then as we fix them, then we unskip them within the, you know, we, we remove the skip part. Um, and that way we basically have, you know, we have a, we, we're always testing the ones we know that work and then we would find out if all of a sudden it was, it was going to not work for some reason. Um, because, you know, if you have the giant, you know, if you end up with just a giant red X, chances are we're not going to go read those logs all the time. Um, because we're like, oh, well, it's just a red X again, you know? Um, and, but this would sort of, this would, this would, this would trigger us to know if something else that we didn't know is breaking or was broken is breaking. Um, um, for example, you know, to make sure that maybe we don't add more tests that that deal with the files and, and temporary directories and having multiple open, I think, which is one of the common things on Windows that you were gonna, you had a, you had like one or two there that you were gonna fix that was related to that. Um, but you know, if we if someone had added one of those tests, um, it would show up right away um, because the CI for that would fail, right? Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 it does. All right, so let me just write. Does that still sound? Does that sound like a good course of action then, or do you have any concerns or thoughts yeah, about that? I, I, another question, like you just wanted a basic workflow, like running the base, installing DFFML. Basic yeah, just, just the main the package. package. Yeah, yeah. So okay, because um, so. the workflows you have written for other things. Yeah, like they're you complicated have scripts and stuff. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because we have to test all the plugins, and then it does the matrix and everything. But yeah, let's just make it do. You know, let's make the the minimal as possible to run just the just the the main test suite. Um, 
So it would be a new YAML file, right, for GitHub Actions? No, I think you can just add it under. Um, uh, let's see. I think you can add it like as another section here. So, um, for example, workflows testing. So, so each one of these ends up as like its own job, um, or like its own line item. Um, so if you'll, if you'll oh, notice, all right. sorry, sorry. like I was, I was confused that runs on was written. Just once oh yeah. Over there. Yeah. No worries. Okay. No worries. Yeah. So yeah. Runs on is, is within there. So yeah. So you could just do like windows and then we'll runs on windows. Um, so let's see, let's make a new, um, uh, line item within the checks by copying the, um, test. Or what is it? Test. Yeah. Test. Lock um, within within jobs and trimming it down until we are just running the tests for the main. Python package, um, and maybe uh, leave leave in the Python versions uh, within the matrix, um, so that we test both um, 3.7 and 3.8, um, and then change runs on to whatever it should be for Windows. Um, and then uh, use unit test dot skip if decorator to mark any tests that um, are failing, then start fixing the failing ones. Um, uh, let's make this run on every PR, every push or PR so that we know if the status of a test, uh, a non-skipped test starts failing. Okay. Does that all sound good? I'll, I'll push it. No. Sweet. Anything else on this? No, no. Thank you. All right, cool. Um, and then let's just do Yeah, let's just do so. Uh, anything else other than the Windows test stuff? No, not right now. Okay, cool. Um, and then let's see. So, um, so Seco um, on this one. Um, okay, so all I noticed was that there was a greater than or a less than or equals, and it should just be less than. Um, and so then I think we're good on this one. So and you've changed it, and none of these tests should be failing. So or if they are, they're probably a false positive. So and then the change log should be failing. So well, I guess maybe maybe we'll just. Let's see, did it run, ran 3.8 docs, it ran model dev for pi, which means, okay, it's run all of these, which means it ran the setup.py, so this stuff got tested. Um, so I think we can merge this now. Um, install exception, exception, great. Um, and then let's see, pass black, I believe, right? Pass style, great. All uh, right, sweet. So let's see. Instead of notify incompatible Python installation. Okay, great. Wonderful, wonderful. All right. Um, the only other thing is is usually we'd capitalize the first letter of the the first word, uh, but that's not critical. So just since 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 we're all just brain dump everything but um that's the only thing so i think let's see and there's one commit great i'll rebase this 
Very nice. Yay. Thanks. Thank you. All right, that's a good one. Um, sweet, okay, now run a million test cases, GitHub. All right, merged, okay, so. Uh, fixed, do, should be, do, merged. All right, yay, thank you. Um, so, and then let's see, so, is there anything else that you were thinking of? So, so next, um, I mean, like we talked about, if you want to dive straight, what, what are you thinking of doing next? Do you want to do, um, you know, are you, are you interested in looking at more models or, um, because we've got basically three things. I don't know. I don't know how much you read at the docs, but we've got three things. There's like models, data sources, and then there's like data set modification, um, and generation. Um, um, so do you have any specific one or are you just going to sort of poke around and explore things? Yeah, I'm thinking about using the auto ML feature that fits the data set and let the FF ML to create um, the model and maybe change by itself. But I have failed with um, manually creating the model myself with TensorFlow. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I think the so from an auto ML perspective, we've got the auto SK learn in there. Um, and you'll probably want to, you know, you probably want to look at, so we should be doing, you know, and everybody's going to laugh when they hear this, but we should be doing a release soon. Um, I swear. Um, unfortunately, a bunch of people at my work just um, left my work and have piled on this giant sort of uh, hot potato project on me. Um, so... So that had slowed me down. Um, but um, let's see, what was I going to say? Um, yes, and I'm not sure if you found this yet, but this is where the models are. Um, and yeah, from an auto ML perspective, sort of find, you know, something that tunes the hyperparameters for you. Um, wait, where is it? Where is... Oh. Well, that's a problem. Um, we have a auto SK learn library, um, which is a wrapper around the just a hyperparameter tuning version of, of scikit. Um, and then, you know, we've got the other, you know, we've got more like, um, you know, neural network things with TensorFlow and stuff. So that might be your best, you know, if you, if you want to go more neural network, um, but then, you know, tune the type of parameters yourself, then yeah, TensorFlow, TensorFlow, PyTorch, um, and there, those are those are good. Um, PyTorch, Sakshom just uh, just implemented recently, and that that could be good because you can do the um, you can do you can you can define the the layers as YAML if you wanted to um, too. So uh, that's nice, and he can he can answer your questions on that. Um, so, but let's just see here because. Scripts, docs, care. I think we just may not have. Yeah, I think we forgot to add auto SK learner here. Well then. Um, well, let's make an issue for that. Um, we have auto scikit learn, but apparently it's not listed in our docs. Um, and this is, there's another issue that is supposed to be fixing this. Um, fact that we have to add it at all, but it's good to know. Um, all right. Um, yeah, so just, you know, poke, I would say poke around at the, um, the you know, the with the, the various tutorials. Um, like there's, let's see, where do we, where there's, there's the neural networks tutorial might be helpful for you here. Um, and then there's also, um, let's see, there's, yeah, there's the model tutorials and then there's, um, there's, but the, the other two are about writing a custom model. And if you just, you know, want to, if you just want to train a model, then the plugins page for the models is probably likely going to be very helpful for you. Or I think there was a few things under the examples 
um, MNIST and the flower stuff, um, the classification of the flowers that, that may also be helpful. And then you can also ask, you can also ask any of us. And I think Saksham may be your your best person to ask um, if you run into things with with you know with PyTorch. Um, and you know you can ask any of us, but but he he just did the PyTorch stuff. So if you if you use that, then you can ask him. Um, Oh yeah, you can ask me if you have any doubts. Yes, thanks. All right. Um, so let's see. And I'll just put. Be working on chain a model. Um, let's see. Um, so yeah. So and then I'll put it in the notes here. So. Use PyTorch um, ask section um, for help if needed, um, and then let us know uh, any um, any anything that was unclear along the way. Um, or if we could organize the documentation better to make it more clear what you needed to find, um, etc. So just you know, just if if you happen to notice anything, you know, could have been easier to find or something could have been clear, just you know, shoot us a note in Gitter, um, and that way we can we can track that. Um, and then let's see what we also found that auto sk learn is not in scripts docs here make an issue for this okay all right let's see so sakshan what did you want to chat about today so uh, I implemented the data flow stuff and uh, the model is training, but the problem again comes down to the, uh, there are like 4,000 images and after like three, four minutes of pre-processing, uh, the process is just killed. Mm, all right. All right, so. That's definitely going to be a memory error, um, I would assume. But or, sorry, my mic. That's probably going to be a memory error. Um, are you doing this? Where are you doing it? Your laptop or uh, code lab? Uh, or I'm doing it on Google Cloud. Uh, I'm doing this on Google Cloud. Okay. Cool. Good to know. Maybe uh, I have uh, exhausted the memory in my AVM instance. Yeah, um, I think I have a patch set. So the way it works right now, obviously, is it's going to go try to pre-process all of them at the same time. Um, and so it's loading in all the images and making all those arrays and everything, right? And that's probably just, you know, creating memory issues. Um, there's a, I have, I have a patch set. It's part of the stuff um it's part of this stuff to to add threading support for the non-async operations uh to run them in their own threads um and i haven't quite gotten the whole patch set working but i think i have the stuff working where we can cap the number of running contexts um so you could cap the number of images that are being pre-processed at a time which should you know fix your memory issue um, so we'll all I'll look into getting you that that um, those set of patches, um, and we'll try to apply those to master um, and and hopefully fix that issue. All right. So the everything else is working. Uh, I, I wanted to say that great. The model is being trained. I trained on so, a few images for testing. It's just I think mem the memory issue, the process killed one. <laughs> All 
Okay. That's that's fantastic news. Nice. Um, so hopefully we can get this done, and then you'll be you'll be. Um, and this is the this was the improved colorization one with the neural network, right? Uh, imp uh, this was the one I showed you in the Google Collab. Okay. Yep. So, yep. The so colorization. Yeah. The notebook. Nice. Okay. So oh, there were a few. Yeah. So it it's it it gave out really great. Uh, results but also i wanted to say that there were a few lines of code that were uh giving error in the pytorch underscore net dot pi okay. uh, when uh, when in the end i added if 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 statements for uh, the non classification tasks so i also fixed that i have also fixed that but i haven't pushed them for right now i look okay. on a pr with all this uh, at once Fantastic. when this issue is fixed. Right. Um, okay, so probably a memory issue trying to pre-process all of them at the same time. Uh, okay, what, what is that? Um, patch set. Let me just try to find the branch so we don't lose it. Um, Is it Docker? No, it's not Docker CI. It's Vin6 scan. Wow, six months ago, really. Is it Vin6 scan? Um, okay, I just want to find this real quick. Yeah, okay, maybe the too many branches. All right, okay, never mind. Um, okay. Oh. All right. Okay, John, to get find um, patch that that uh, caps number of executing contacts. Yeah, I have a feeling that this is. I think that I ran into this issue whenever I did this thing too, and that was why I had to do that. So, um, okay. Anything else you want to talk about, Sakshom? Uh, no, that is all for now. Sweet. That's great news. Good stuff. All right, Sudhanshu, how are things going with you? How did your uh, tests yeah. go? Uh, yeah, exams were great. Good. Uh, uh, how are things going for you? Oof. Well, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm underwater still. Um, yeah, I had, uh, I got the good news is, good news is I, uh, I've got some stuff that I can offload to one of my coworkers. The bad news is two of my coworkers who were carrying a lot of the burden on, on this other project, they just decided to, um, announce that they're um, leaving the company, um, so now that stuff is is unfortunately falling to me. One of my one of my coworkers, he said, "You're," he said, "You're definitely in the running to have all of this stuff handed to you." And he said, "I'd like to emphasize the word running, as if like I should run away from this project." <laughs> so, so yes, yeah, so that's how things are going. We'll we'll we'll, we'll hope that it all works out, but. Um, yeah. Okay. So, but and then I really want to get this out because, like, I've got my um, got my yeah. We want to we want to get this release out here. Um. Yes, that's how things are. Okay. So I think. Okay. When did I last see this? Because I thought I saw. Uh, uh yes. So uh, in this, uh, only least. one of the model tests is failing. Okay. Great. Wow. Um, that is the uh, clustering model of cyclic. Oh, that's right. And we still haven't gotten a hold of some Hamachu. And I'm sorry, I haven't had a chance to take a look at it. So let's just know. Okay. So only one model. Wow. That's wow. Dang. You've come a long way here. 
Yeah. Nice work. Failing. Um, so only one model test is failing, which is um, the scikit cluster. And just, okay, let's see, so, okay, um, yeah, unfortunately, I think uh, Humanshu got that full-time job, and he's probably been swamped as well, um, so let's just take a look at this real quick, um, does anybody have anything else that they wanted to talk about um, this week? All right. Well, I'll just if if you if you end up with it, then uh, we can circle back at the end of this. Um, but let's see. So let's let's just try to debug this now. Um, so let me pull it down, and we'll we'll see what's going on here. Can everybody see resolution wise here? Um, yes. Does anybody want it bigger? Uh, I I feel it's fine for me. Okay. Um, let's just make sure we've got all the, okay, I don't know what's going on here, but, uh, oops, oops, where'd we go? Okay, good, fetch. Okay, so all right. Um, then you guys, for those of you who haven't seen it, this is my favorite thing. It's called NodeMon, um, and it reruns all your tests for you whenever, or well, you can make it rerun all your tests like so, um, whenever you uh, save a file. Uh, so this is what I do: is I say CD models. Oops, CD model scikit. And we don't need this coverage command here. And Python setup.py test. Okay. Um, and we'll pick a clustering model after we know one which is failing here. All right. So. Just like a clustering. Okay, without label. Let's see, with label, without label. Okay. Right, now we're just going to select one test case to run. Let me put it over here. Okay. <clears throat> All right, um, no records with matching features. So, so we're looking at model, scikit, tests, and we'll check out tests first. Um, so we're looking at, here's the, okay, so items within the first set, but not in the second. Um, Okay, so basically it was saying... Oh, yes, the, the main problem is it is actually trying to find cluster. But uh, oh. instead of cluster, the, uh, the name is actually X. Mm. Okay. So that's the issue. Okay. And this is probably related to this T cluster or something like that. Yes. Yeah, yes. okay. So, and I looked at this at one point and I was wondering, this is... It seems, I think there may be a bug there. Well, there is obviously a bug. <laughs> okay. So, let's take a look at the, okay, so I can config, but we want, okay, and then T cluster here. So, T cluster is feature. Um, 
Oh, uh, okay, this isn't, this isn't actually what's going on here, so... Okay, so let's see, there's no... That config seems to be just sort of maybe an out-of-date reference. Um, so... Okay. Config fields. T cluster. Okay. Here's where we're actually creating this. Okay, so we're creating, yeah, we're doing this funky creation of config classes. So usually, um, usually we end up, or I'll just, just for the sake of a recap here, um, usually when we have a config class, it looks something like, let's see. Um, oh, this R looks something like this, um, where we decorate it with that config, but we have also got this uh, special make config method, which allows us to uh, create one of these classes dynamically without sort of, you know, writing it out like we normally would write a, a class. We can just pass it, a, I believe, a dictionary and some other things, and it'll create the class for us. Um, okay, so... So we're checking to see if we're a supervised estimator or an unsupervised estimator. Um, and if it's supervised, then we get psychic context. Otherwise, we get psychic context unsupervised, which is our current issues with the clustering models, which are unsupervised. Um, so, so config fields T cluster is default is none. And the issue here might just be that, let's see, yeah, so T cluster. So we probably want to look at the way T cluster, oh, and this, oh, here we go, predict. Yeah, so here, predict is called cluster. So what happens if we change this to X? Okay, that works. Okay, so that's our problem. The source of our problem has to do something with the predict. Um, so uh, yes, I feel like uh, that is happening because for uh, for getting the accuracy, we first call the prediction, and the prediction is actually calling for X. No, it was actually previously calling for cluster, but we weren't able to find that cluster. Um. So now when we have changed it to X, uh, then then that's why it's working fine. Yeah, okay. Let's see. Yeah, yeah because in the accuracy scorer, uh, what we actually have done is we first call the predict method. And then we get the ground truth value and the predicted value. And then we like uh, calculate the accuracy. Ah. Yes, uh, but in the predict method, uh, it's actually trying to call this cluster. Okay. And, 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 but actually, it is x value. I, I think that's the issue. Okay, so let me just double check and let me see everything here. So, right now, are we still, did we get rid of the accuracy method within the models yet or no? Uh, yes, we have got rid of all of it. Within okay. the models, we have all removed it. Okay, so okay, yes, yeah, so ac model accuracy score, and then uh, uh, it's in the model uh, context. Ah, but uh, okay, so okay, I I meant I meant have we moved it so that it's the um, accuracy score context doing score like this. Um, um, yeah, MCTX. Okay. Sorry, what? Uh, that was the actually the plan of the phase five. Yeah. Oh, that was phase five. Okay. Phase um, five. Yeah, because I'm thinking that may also sort of help us here a little bit. Um, okay. So let's take a look. Um, so, all right. So DFML model model.
Okay, accuracy score. Okay, yeah, and it's doing this. This is the problem here, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so then in this case, yeah, okay, so so in this case, it's fine when it does the, so when it does the, yeah, it needs to be um, T cluster, right? Or, uh, yes. Let's see. So it well, can remain predict, actually, but... Uh, actually, there are like, two types of clustering models. One of the clustering model actually has the ground truth value, but there is another clustering model which does not have the ground truth value. Oh. So in that, if we actually trying to, uh, we are trying to find the find the ground truth value, we we won't be able to find it. Oh, okay. So is so, this all we need then? Because it looks like we have, if we have the ground truth value, then do t cluster. Otherwise, do predict equals x. Yeah, I think that that should make sense. Oh, okay, great! Yay! <laughs> All right. Wow, this was really hard to figure out. Um, I mean, we looked at this for a long time, so this has been several weeks now. Um, okay, yeah, I, I, and I, I frequently confuse myself with the, um, with the whole, um, the what the transductive versus the non-transductive ones that. Himanshu had talked about. Okay, good, good job, Sutanshu. Um, okay, so I guess this is your fix here, um, and I'll just point paste that in, in Gitter. Um, well, let's let's actually let's not speak too soon because I did this this morning and, and then all my tests failed. Um, so let's run this test suite again. Uh oh, yeah, we're getting a couple errors here. All right. Um, all right. Yeah, and some of these are still cluster in X. Yes. And so, some places it is true label. Mm -hmm. Trying to find that. So with label, with label, with label, and this is just integration. Okay. So. It looks like we eliminated the ones. Was that the ones without label that we eliminated then? Yeah, we eliminated the issues with without label. Without okay. label. So now we have issues with label. Um, okay. Um, So model scikit test or uh, specify give predict config property. I'm just committing this change. So we're giving the predict config property uh, when true cluster value not present okay um all right so and now i mean i'm kind of guessing i mean this is the same thing though isn't it i think actually wait yeah this is the same thing because it's yeah oh, okay there you go because it's we should be right the issue um model the issue right is that we're doing predict and so once again it's saying there is no you know predict is cluster um so yeah hmm i'm kind of wondering whether we want this true cluster variable at all here Uh, maybe we actually need it for the uh, models uh, which does have the ground truth value. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, it's like it's it's basically oh okay, so now we still have a, a problem here. In the oh in the integration test, yeah, because it's basically saying okay, so use the ground truth value. What was what is it use the ground truth value for now? I feel like it may have been an accuracy related thing. Um, and if so, then we could just nix that. Um, um, do you remember? Okay, cluster. Uh, I think it was an accuracy related thing because it's not getting used in here anymore. <laughs> yes, it's actually an accuracy. Oh, okay. So we can just get rid of that altogether. Because you, or unless you put it in, are you using, an, you're not using, or yeah, you, let's see, sorry. So actually scikit, uh, this clustering model requires like uh, its own accuracy score. Mm -hmm. yes, That's... It has like, it has like a, a scorer which does not take the ground truth value. Mm -hmm. There's a scorer like that. That's so right. We, so we need, probably need to wrap that first and use that here. Mm -hmm. And the, but you didn't make you didn't did you implement that did you implement that score yet? Uh no. No okay, yeah um okay so but I mean at this point it looks like yeah and and it would it would I think previously right we had um I think we had yeah okay here it was so when we remove the accuracy method um. We removed where we're yeah. using T cluster. Yes. And it basically is saying if T cluster is none, otherwise T cluster. Okay, so, and, and in this case, okay, so the way I read this is that, you know, there was another feature name added to say use this as the true cluster value, right? Um, and then also label, you know, whatever I'm predicting as with the predict feature, right? So, uh, yes. yeah, right. Because I think that's what Himachu had done initially was he made it so that, okay, so you give me the predict feature name and that's when I make a prediction, then I'm going to put the, you know, the output value is whatever that feature name is, right? So map in the prediction oh, output no. dictionary, map the feature name given for predict to whatever value I predicted, right? What, for the cluster, right? Yes. And then I think what he did here was saying, okay, well, the true cluster value may not be the same name as whatever you asked me to predict on. So let me accept that as a separate feature. Um, and then if you give me that 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 as a separate feature, then I'll use that name and then I'll still, you know, make the prediction whatever feature name you told me to do as the prediction. So it may be good enough to do you know, it may it may be I think it may be sufficient to basically turn this T cluster field into some kind of, you know, Boolean value um, for whenever you do, do the accuracy score because you could then just say, you know, instead of basically, you're always saying, okay, you can't, you can't tell me what that the clue, true cluster value is a different, um, you know, a, a different feature name, right? Like, you know, you get, you're getting, if you, if you tell me you're going to predict this, then you better put the true cluster value in there too, which is what we do with every single other model. Um, and, but you could just say, okay, well, you could have a flag, to the accuracy, I, I'm not, yeah, I'm not, it'll depend on how you do you implement the accuracy, but you could basically just turn this into some kind of boolean flag in the config, right? And then you could say, okay, if T cluster is true, then actually use that value for the accuracy prediction. Otherwise, don't. Um, does that sound like what you were thinking there? Uh, yeah, maybe we can go with that. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Just I wanted to sort of get that down as a, as a is since since we are recording, hopefully, um, uh, that to, in case because I'm assuming we're going to get confused by this again later. Um, so, 
um, is is that so where you think are you you are going to go then implement this as an accuracy score right but this is oh this is when you were going to go wrap all of the scikit accuracy scores right yes yes when we will wrap all of it then we can uh, use that one of those here. okay okay cool cool um so let's see i mean i think do you want to just take out t cluster then or because uh, it doesn't look like it's being used right now anywhere um sort of i mean in any way that you couldn't use predict Uh, I'm not sure, uh, like. You just, yeah, not not sure how that would go here. Or... Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, yeah. like, how it would go. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay, let's just take it out and we'll find out. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm with you on that. Yeah, that sounds a little bit like a iffy proposition. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say yes to that either. Um, okay, yeah, let's just take it out and see what happens. So. Because if two true cluster present, because now, you know, without that, so without that, this would basically be the determining factor on, okay, sorry, I'm moving around here quickly, but uh, yeah, so basically target, so if target, so this would have been the determining factor on whether it does the mutual info score or not. Um, so we should leave a little note there saying it's supposed to do mutual info score. Um, it's supposed to do mutual if, info. What? If some target is present. Yeah. If 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 we wanted to have T cluster. So. Yes. Okay. So let's leave a little note there. Um, so. To do. Um, if then we want to use the mutual wall, mutual, mutual score accuracy second all right um in this case we might want to change t cluster to a boolean uh, config property um, uh, if that config property is true or well i guess you would just know then you would you would use the accuracy score because you're going to try you're going to decide the accuracy score here within the test and then let me reference the um for more info c commit um let me reference the commit here so that we know which one that we're talking about here yeah this git log dash p has been just the most helpful thing ever for me recently i've found um Okay. Okay. So and then let's just grab for it one more time here and see if it's still around. Okay, yes it is still around, so let's change it over here. No, oh, that was never mind. So yeah, right now it sounds like it's basically just not. Um, it's just not. Uh, it's just not using the mutual info score. Okay, and this is kind of. Okay, end without label. So, so to do um, 
this is the case where we don't where Mr. would be false. Okay. Oh, and I'm not allowed to do that in there. Okay. See what it has to say about this. It might blow up. Okay, it totally blew up. Um, uh, oh, and it got nice. Oh, we're still adding T cluster somewhere. Config fields T cluster. So, um, likely it will need to be no T cluster uh, or something like that um, because we have a case in the integration test cases where it needs to be false. Um, so, yeah, if you saw, okay, so if you see, basically, if we look at this here, right, and this is the case where we want T cluster to be set to false, right, um, since on a command line, we have a Boolean thing, it would show up kind of like, um, you know, T cluster, um, which you could do T cluster, you know, off or something, and then that would end up being false. Um, but you know, it'll basically it'll it'll default to one way, right? Um, so uh, uh, actually, this may run into issues because um, we may run into issues with this because of. Um, for the test data right now, we're passing, it, it has access to that data either way, right? But when we actually run an example, it may not have access to that data. Um, so that's yeah. a bit problematic. Um, but I think that's something that the accuracy score is going to hit or not hit um, based on, um, right, when you do, when you're wrapping that predict method, right, right now, I'm not sure if, you, I don't think you're going to have to wrap the predict method anymore once you have that phase five, um, where you're changing the, the, the calls, um, um, making the accuracy score call predict itself instead of the model context, call the accuracy score call predict. Um, so you should, yeah, you should have greater control in there. Um, but um, I just want to get this all on the recording, you know. Um, but yeah, okay. So you'll, I mean, you'll deal with it when you get there, right? But you'll, you'll probably have to play with, um, you know, how do, how do you get what you want out of the predict method and, and, and the boolean value here as a reasonable command line flag. Um, okay. Um, Okay, and then let's see what happens. Hopefully this all works. I see we go. Uh, oops. Model predict. Wait, what the hell happened here? No, we ended up with another situation like this. Oh, hopefully, this works. Um, I see we got Shaw. How's it going, Shaw? Uh, it's good, John. How about you? Good, good. Busy, but good. Busy's good. I'd rather be busy than bored.
All right. Yay. Okay. Yeah. Finally. Ah, yeah, finally. <laughs> okay. Um, and then let's just make sure we got um, two cluster. So, so we want to make sure we take out. Oops. Okay, we want to take out all of these. So, um, in here, so this should probably switch to. Okay. T cluster. And then we'll just call this remove T cluster. So model scikit uh, clustering remove T cluster. Let me get commit out of this actually. Okay. Um, So C needing recording from 2020-11-03 for more details. All right, um, T cluster uh, is not needed until it's not needed uh, now that we've removed the accuracy method method it used to be used no oh, that's not a great sentence it previously was used uh, to decide uh, if we should um, use mutual info score or not in the accuracy the scikit unsupervised ac accuracy method um it is all right so let, let's just leave it as that uh, T cluster is not needed now that we removed the ASCII method. It was previously used to decide if we should use mutual info score or not in this scikit unsupervised accuracy method. Um, if uh, true clustering value had been provided, uh, uh, there will likely be issues when no value is present until we uh, implement uh, phase five of the accuracy scoring refactor. Okay. All right, I'll push these guys up and then we'll, hopefully that's good. So, um, all right. Okay. Well, I'm glad we figured that out. Um, obviously, I think we've we've pushed your problems till later a little bit, but but hopefully they will, you know, you, it'll it'll sort itself out with the phase five stuff. Do you have anything you want to talk about here? Or you want to uh, just things to think about? You want to uh, get down on the recording maybe <laughs> for the future? <laughs> uh, yeah. Like maybe like now we can merge the phase four. Yeah. Into the so uh, accuracy stage. I think so. And yes. Then, and then I will move on to phase five. Great, great. I think yeah. I think that's it's time. So, um, uh, issue was with T cluster. Um, uh, so ready, ready to merge. Wow, this is a big, one, big one. Phase four. Are wow, you doing a major refactor here? Phase four. Um, then on to phase five. All right. Um, and then we have uh, uh, right. Uh, 
All right. Um, so let's see. So yeah. So nothing else then, Sudhanshu. Just we'll all merge it once we double check there. Uh, uh yeah, that's it for now. Cool. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Very very nice. Um, all right. So Shah, what have you? Uh, what have you been up to? What do you want to talk about today? Uh, I am. I've been making progress on that anomaly detection model, and there's a couple of things I wanted to ask you. Okay. Uh, so yeah, the first one is uh, instead of accuracy, I've used F1 score as um, as the evaluation metric. So is that fine, or should we just go back to accuracy? Uh, uh, what do you mean? Uh, you mean like the uh, so what do you mean by accuracy in this situation? Like accuracy in this case would be, uh, say you have a data set of a thousand examples and you have like 10 anomalies and, uh, 990 normal examples, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, the reason I use F1 score is, uh, I felt that it would be a better evaluation metric than accuracy because Say in this case, you have an algorithm that outputs everything to be uh, to not be an anomaly. Then its accuracy would be around ninety nine percent, where its F one score would be pretty low. So okay. I felt it. Yeah. F1 okay. So. Let me just capture this. I think you made the right decision there. Um, also noted that, you know, since I think that's definitely the right decision for now, obviously uh, we were just talking about Sudhanshu's accuracy stuff. Um, in the future, we'll be, we'll be switching things around with the accuracy a little bit, and we'll just need to make sure that we maintain, um, uh, you know, that's, that's, this is a good, this is a good case um, where we need to think about, okay, so for some models, some things are more appropriate than others, and we need to have a way to, to have, you know, the models recommend, you know, what kinds of accuracy score are applicable, applicable to them, or maybe, or I think it was actually, we wanted to have the accuracy scores infer from the models somehow, uh, uh, whether they are applicable or not. Um, because, you know, we're going to basically try to leave it up to the users to decide which accuracy score the scoring method they want to use, but we also don't want the users to shoot themselves in the foot and choose the wrong thing. So we'll need to right. keep, yeah, we need to keep this in mind, right? And I'm not sure because we were talking about, you know, uh, regression, classification, NLP um, stuff, right? Where the, you know, these are all sort of very, very different when it comes to, uh, what accuracy scores you actually want to use. Um, and so this is maybe another case where it's like, I don't know, you know, I, I don't know how we would identify this one, you know, something like, you know, an inverse type of thing um, where, you know, uh, not really. like, like yeah. uh, the, the place where this usually happens is, uh, as far as I've seen, uh, the places where you have a really skewed data set. Skewed. Okay. Highly like, skewed data set. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, in this case, we'll probably estimate that the number of anomalies is probably going to be very low in comparison to the number of normal examples, right? Yeah. So that's why I thought okay. uh, that F1 would probably be better off. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. Inverse is not the right word there. Um, so. So, and then let's keep, let me just make a note that let's keep this in mind. Um, so, should we use F1 score accuracy? Hi, uh, let's use, uh, we should continue to use F1 score um, because that uh, does a better job of the uh, pick the uh, when anomalies are being detected successfully or not is that a good description there or yeah 
it's it's fine. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh, so this model is um used on highly skewed data sets. Um. Uh, we want to keep this in mind, um, and maybe I'll add a like accuracy or something. So hopefully we can come back through and look at these for accuracy purposes. Um, uh, we want to keep this in mind when we figure out how accuracy scores should interact with models. Uh, to ensure users use the correct uh, scores on the correct models. All right. Um, anything else you wanted to say on this? Uh, yeah, one more thing. Uh, like in the model tutorial, we had like a, a separate function to make predictions. Yeah. Uh, and the f like the format in which the predictions were made. Uh, was that for each record, uh -huh. uh, we output the correct label. So uh -huh. my question to you was, do you want me to continue with that format or is it fine if I display, say, a list for each example dip, uh, depicting whether it is an anomaly or not? Like one if it's an anomaly and zero if it's not an anomaly. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um... Okay. All right. So, wow, I can really not spell anomaly. Um, okay. So, I mean, okay. So, what what is what are you currently doing? I guess. Uh, currently. I've outputted a list of uh, outliers or anomalies. Ah, uh, as the and predict. I haven't... Yeah, so... Yes. Do either way. So, yeah, I mean, the way the way that, that this would, you know... There, there's obviously, a, you know, there's benefit. <laughs> there's a lot of benefit to that. If you've only got a few anomalies, right, then you would only want to output a few things. Um, but from the from the perspective of, you know, we want to make sure everything fits under like this standard standard banner of a uh, of way of doing things, right? Then I think, yeah, what you're saying about we should probably use, you know, whatever, you know, if you have the config property of predict, right um and whatever that feature name is well well when you're when you're when you're training you take that i assume you have a predict feature and then you you use that as whether you know it's a zero yeah, yeah okay so then i think that's that's the correct thing to do here too um yeah i think i think that's because that i mean that is uh that maintains the uh, the you know sort of the standard way of doing things, right? And then if we feed into something else later, um, then it it you know it can consume in a similar in a similar way. Any? Do you have any? Just to confirm. Yeah. Yeah. So labels for each uh, record. Just yes. So for each record, we should you know do you know true or false or zero or one or something probably zero or one. Yeah. Right. Uh, this is this is not this is just something I wanted to ask. Why mm -hmm. do we have uh, asynchronous functions? Ah, why do we have asynchronous functions? I'm glad you asked. Oh wow, I'm so glad you asked. Um, okay, so the the beauty of all these asynchronous functions is that um, we can take all of this stuff and we can well, okay, we can do this. Okay, so. Right, right now, right. You may be doing all of this. Um, you know, this is very. You know, it may be very synchronous to you to run all these things on the command line at this moment, or you know, run the tests, right? Um, but when we get into like the okay, so the the data flow. Have you looked at the data flows at all? Uh, no, not much. Like, I get why why we use the asynchronous command. My concern, or rather, I'm pretty sure. Uh, my thought process is somewhat uh, 
screwed up here but uh, doesn't putting asynchronous uh, doesn't having every function as asynchronous mess with the order in which it's supposed to be executed uh no um so it, it so basically it gives you the ability to do that um which is which is the the strength here is that yeah so you you have the ability to execute it in a different order whereas you and obviously with threading and other things that in multiprocessing modules and stuff that you may have seen yeah. that also has the ability but as you will also find if you start using the threading in multiprocessing modules the um the error handling uh you can lose errors very easily when you start getting into, you know, hundreds or, or thousands of these, um, you know, maybe processes or, or threads or whatever. Um, um, or just like, you know, instances of running over time, it'll start losing exceptions. And, and yeah, basically the, the best way to combat that is to move to the async IO approach because the async, async IO does a much better job of ensuring that we, always handle errors appropriately when they come up um, when you're in this like concurrent or multiprocessing environment um, and um, so yeah that's basically why everything is all async throughout um, and the other reason is that um, for example so on most of the models in here that we have right now they pull the entire data set into memory which is not ideal um, because the the idea is that you know okay so for example if you have a data source right and that data source is a database you're going to be interacting with it over the network right um and those network calls are something that you really would like to have over something like async io because then you could be doing multiple of them at the same time um and uh, so, for example, maybe you're training a model and responding to, uh, you know, an HTTP request at the same time. Um, and so, you know, when you get more records in from your database, um, then you train, you know, you incrementally train the model more. And then maybe you get, you have like a WebSocket going um, from an HTTP request. And then once you've trained your model more, now you're using that model for predictions right and you're using that every time you get a new piece of data over the WebSocket, then you make a new prediction right um and so that's sort of you know that's why everything is asynchronous because <laughs> because um uh sort of like the farther you go into real implementation space uh the more the more it becomes a giant headache for it not to be um now it definitely you know, at times is a bit of a headache to deal with, um, and at first to, to, to wrap one's head around, um, but it, it 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 greatly simplifies a lot of our problems later, essentially. Um. Uh, right, got Yeah, and then and and there is another thing you'll notice, which is so there is another limitation of it, right? Which is that you know within a coroutine. Um, you know, you don't, you, you can't run, you don't want to run things that block on CPU within a coroutine. Um, now this, this can become a problem with some of the models um, because obviously models are CPU intensive. Um, and so what we do, and this is part of why we have all these config classes, um, is that with the config classes, you can serialize the config, the config, the config class is completely serializable. So you could pass the config class into another thread, instantiate models within other threads, and then actually run the CPU intensive stuff within its own, uh, you know, CPU or thread. Well, at the same time, you still, um, you you know, you're still able to use these things. Uh, you know, you're able to use the asynchronous features, right? So yes. So for example, sorry, this is. This is getting a little long-winded, um, but I'll wrap it up here. Um, and this is something that we need to we need to sort of get the last mile on. Um, that is part of that patch set that I was talking about earlier. Um, that has the stuff about max or capping the number of contexts. Um, but um, but yeah, we'll basically there's a there's a little bit more work to get it all together. But but you know when you're so. If you have a CPU bound model, right, in one 
if you have a CPU bound model for that CPU bound model to be able to ace, you know, get the benefits of an asynchronous um, loop of accessing, you know, a database or whatever over the network, it all needs to be written with the async code. Um, but that coroutine actually needs to run in another thread to be to not block the other coroutines right so we'd schedule it out to another thread but we still write everything in async so that we can so we can access the database with um with with async code um so that yeah so that you can use the model within that thread you know as as on on demand um with the rest of the um you know with with the rest of the network operations that you might be doing related to that model um but yeah, anyways, so um, if you can't tell, I love the async stuff. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so if you, and if you guys ever have any, if you run into any async random non-DFFML, you guys can always ask me questions about stuff that's not DFFML too, if you ever run into anything. Um, but uh, yeah, and if you run into questions with that, just let me know. But anyways, um, so does that, is everybody, are you good, Shaw? Um, do you have any other questions on that or anything? Uh, no, just just one more thing. Uh, yeah. The way the model works is uh, it takes a part of the set, uh, basically uh, a cross-validation set, to predict the boundary or the value below which we classify anomalies, right? Okay. So currently I've said that uh, to... 10% of the training set. Mm -hmm. uh, later, later uh, we can like make it user defined. Yeah. So, and I would just say, you know, add that as a config property. Um, this and and you know, yeah, you can you can do it later, but you know, that'll sort of, you know, this is kind of you know how how you you can use that as a way to get practice. Um, you know, getting comfortable with the config structures. Um, if you wanted to make that user yeah, configurable. I haven't really gotten very okay. comfortable with yeah. stuff yet. Yep, yep. Um, so I'll just make a note here that uh, currently we. we uh, I guess if John is not available for your doubts regarding config stuff, then I can also help you with that. Yes, that's a great point. Saksham did a lot of work reworking yes. the config system. Uh, so we currently use 10% as what, was it? Uh, a validation cert. Okay. Uh, this is a non-user figure, but will be soon. Uh, talk to Sakshan or John for uh, questions. So it's talk for to Shaksham or John for questions on config uh, and config properties. All right. Sweet. Anybody have anything else they want to talk about or just say real quick here? We've got a lot of stuff we talked about today. Great job, guys. All right. And so, yep, good to see you, Shah, and good to see you, Sudhanshu, Saksham, and uh, it was uh, Siko, right? Yes. Okay, yes. Um, and, you know, correct me if I may I may get wrong um, next time. Um, it's Shah can tell you it's taken me a couple times to get get Shah right. Um, so, um, so, yes. All right. Well, thank thank you, everyone, and I, uh, I hope you guys all have a, a great week. And, um, yep, just let me know. Um, I'll be on Gitter. So, thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Bye. Bye-bye.